And finally, the three doctors took me down a long hall, and they sat me down, and they said, Jim, we're not sure why, and we're not sure when, but we do know that someday you're going to be totally blind, and there's not one thing we can do about it. And your whole world just stops. I didn't know what I was going to do. So I just went into my famous denial phase. I just acted like it was never going to happen because I couldn't deal with it. You ever know anybody, they can go about 80 miles an hour straight toward a brick wall and they act like nothing bad is ever going to happen in their life. Well, that was me. Had a marvelous capacity for burying my head in the sand, so I just went on to college. Now, near where I went to college, there is a school for blind children. And to this day, I don't know what my motives were. I don't know if I was trying to make a deal with God or help out or learn more about it or what. But I went over to this school for blind children, and I met with the principal. And I said, look, I'm 17 years old. I have no background, no training, no experience in working with blind kids, but I'd like to teach here. Well, you can imagine how excited they were to see me. Oh, yeah, here's the guy we've been looking for right here. But they did say, Jim, if you're really serious about this, we do have one kid you can kind of work with one-on-one. -on -one. Well, I said, I was kind of thinking of having my own class, actually. And they said, Jim, you either work with this one kid or you get out of here. I said, okay, what do I teach this kid? And they said, Jim, that's just it. Christopher is four years old. He's totally blind. He has a lot of other physical problems. And we have determined, we have determined that he's never going to grow or learn or advance or develop any more than he already has. So what we want you to do is keep him quiet and keep him away from the other kids so at least they can learn their lessons because Christopher will never learn any more than he already has. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you ever forget that we always, we always live up to the expectations we have of ourselves or those expectations that we allow other people to place upon us. Thank you. The only training they gave me to work with this poor kid was two things. They said, Jim, you gotta keep his shoes tied. We're afraid he's gonna trip on a shoelace and hurt himself. And the other thing is, you gotta keep him away from the stairs. It's very hard for blind people to climb stairs. We're afraid he's gonna fall down the staircase and hurt himself. Other than that, we don't care what you do. Just keep him quiet so the other kids can learn their lessons. Well, that first day, I went out to meet Christopher, and he was very, very small, much smaller than you would expect a four-year-old child to be, and he was totally blind, and he had a lot of other problems. And I said, young man, before I leave here, no matter how many days or weeks or months or years it takes, you are at least going to learn how to tie your shoes and climb the stairs. And he said, no, I can't. And I said, yes, you can. And he said, no, I can't. And I said, yes, you can. And he said, no, I can't. And if you've ever spent any time with a four-year-old, <laughs> you know, they can do that all day long. I had never experienced anything quite like that. <laughs> no, I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Where are you right now? Well, I began going to the university every day, and then every afternoon I would spend with Christopher learning how to tie our shoes and climb the stairs. Then it happened. I finally hit the wall. I couldn't see to get around on my own anymore. I couldn't read anymore. I didn't know then what you know right now. I didn't know I could exercise my right to choose and make a quality decision and change my life by changing my mind. I would have given a million dollars that day to know what you know right now, because it's been worth a lot more than that to me in every area of my life. But I didn't know that. So I prepared to do the only thing I did know how to do, which was quit. That's what I was good at then. I had a PhD in quitting. In fact, folks, most of you, I don't know your names. I don't know where you're from. I don't know the challenges and the obstacles and the barriers that you face in your world, in your business, in your career, in your personal life. But there's one thing I know about you and your big dream. There's one thing I know about that better than you know about yourself. And that is quite simply this. When it comes to that big dream, the biggest one you ever had inside of you, it is always too soon to quit.
You think you've tried everything, you think you've thought of everything, you think you're at the end of your rope. You're not even close, and I hope that enough challenges and obstacles and barriers will come into your world so you will find out what a giant of a human being you were created to be. But I didn't know that. Thank you. But I didn't know any of that, so I prepared to quit. I went over to school for the, uh, the school for the blind kids for what I thought would be my last day. I got there early and I met with the principal. And I said, look, I'm gonna have to drop out of college. I can't come here anymore and volunteer to work with Christopher. This will be my last day because I just can't make it. Well, I didn't know they dropped Chris off early that day and Christopher's standing outside the open door to the office hearing this whole conversation. So as I went out to tell him goodbye and tell him I loved him and tell him I hope someday somebody else would show up and spend some time with him, he turns to me and says, yes, you can. And I said, no, I can't. And he says, yes, you can. I said, no, I can't. And he said, yes, you can. And as I was preparing to explain to this poor, ignorant, uninitiated, uninformed four-year-old child how that this is somehow different, kid. This is not like learning how to tie your shoes here. This is like going to a major university. As I was preparing to explain that to him so he would understand, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Stovall, either get up and do something with your life or quit lying to this kid. Because if it works, it works for tying your shoes and climbing the stairs and finishing college and creating lives and careers and businesses and lifestyles and destinies that are worthy of you and worthy of your best efforts. And if it doesn't work, let's quit lying to people. Three years later, I graduated from that university with honors and two degrees. And that same week, I had the privilege of my life with what little vision I had left. In fact, one of the last things I ever really remember seeing was then seven-year-old Christopher climb three flights of stairs, turn and sit on that top step, and tie both of his shoes. Thank you. And, and that's the person, that's the person that's impacted my life the most. It's not the movie stars, the athletes, the millionaires, the billionaires. It's a four-year-old child that came into my life for three years to teach me the unadulterated wisdom of the ages, which is quite simply this. No matter what the dream is inside of you, the answer is always yes, you can, because that big dream would not have been put inside of you if you did not have the capacity to achieve it. 